Hey folks, my name is Garrett Wing. I am the owner and founder of American Standard Dog Training and DIYK9.com. Now, what brings me here today is to discuss a very serious matter that's gonna take some time to explain, but it involves uh, a very serious allegation against me and my business in regards to me being uh, abusive to a dog and specifically that I am alleged to have punched a dog in the head. Uh, now I know that this may come as a shock to many of you, but we are gonna dive right in and we are gonna discuss it. Um, and uh, this is not a situation that should be swept under the rug. Uh, when there's a serious allegation like this, it demands a response. And that's what this video is. It's a response video. A lot's gonna be covered in this video. I'm gonna have some notes in front of me to refer to, uh, but you will see uh, a video in which, or multiple videos in which I am accused of, of a heinous act, a heinous crime. And then you're gonna see the actual video and the actual videos, the full video uh, showing the full content and that we have absolutely nothing to hide here uh, and by we, I mean my business and me. I have nothing to hide, and therefore, we're gonna go ahead and put this video out for any of the haters, any of the naysayers, anybody that may be questioning whether the allegations are true or not. You watch this video, and you're gonna find out a lot more about the backstory and a lot more about the truth of the matter. And uh, it's the truth that does matter, so let's get into it. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to address what's been happening in my life and in our business. So uh, some of you may or may not be aware that my business and my reputation are being attacked. And again, I am accused of being an animal abuser and specifically that I punched a dog in the head, which is disgusting. These accusations are completely fabricated and stem from a very short and highly edited video where it shows a five second clip pulled from a nearly 20 minute plus long video of an over four hour training session in which we were dealing with a very dominant and aggressive German shepherd who had bit its owner twice. So let me recap that. Four hour session, five seconds are pulled from that four hour session. And in that five second clip, which is completely blurred out, the allegation is that I struck a dog, <clears throat> but we're gonna show the full video. This fabricated video is making its rounds through social media and unfortunately, folks, are drinking the Kool-Aid and genuinely believe I abused a dog <clears throat> because of what a few talking heads in social media are saying about me with absolutely no evidence whatsoever other than a five second clip, blurred clip of a correction that was given. And yes, I make no excuses about it. The dog received a heavy correction. In fact, a series of heavy leash corrections, which once again, you'll see. In this video that I'm presenting before you now, I'm going to present the following items to tell the whole story so you can stop being lied to by individuals who have been coming after me for at least a couple of years for no apparent reason, other than they obviously appear to not like who I am, what I stand for, and the content that me and my team create. Uh, and to just, just to, to clarify further, I've never said anything bad uh, about these folks. I've never mentioned their name. I've never made a video about them, nothing. I don't know them personally. I don't know anything about them. They don't know anything about me personally either. It's just social media drama, which I can't stand to be honest with you, but here we are. Um, the following items that you're gonna see are, number one, we will show you the highly edited video that is circulating that is causing all the speculation and accusations. I will show you one or two other videos from one of the individuals that continues to harass me and my family so you can see for yourself just a snippet of what we are dealing with and have been dealing with for about two years now. I really don't wanna show his face or his account, but I didn't want there to be any confusion as to exactly what was said and by who said it. And so unfortunately, after some thought, it is what it is. There's no other way for me to show you what the person said than to let you see it from their own lips. I don't wanna be accused of, uh, misquoting or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and, and show that as well. Uh, I will address each of the accusations. There's a total of four, one at a time, and explain or defend in my own words, my position on each and every item. And in short, those four items are my use of prong and e-collars on young puppies, adolescent dogs, and adult dogs. Uh, second, my opinion, or one of my opinions on food aggression. Third, 
a breakdown of training with an aggressive and highly reactive uh, Belgian Malinois from two years ago, a breakdown of training and reveal the correction that I delivered to an aggressive German Shepherd with a bite history on its owner. A and finally, I will give my final thoughts on where I stand given the entire situation that's happening uh, right now. Uh, but first, let's talk about what's been happening. So I'd like to put things in perspective. To start with, my wait, amazing wife, Steph, Stephanie, <clears throat> has been so upset. She's been so upset and stressed about the level of nastiness of these fake accusations that I've caught her crying several times these last few days. Because of how upset she has been, and just the general stress involved in this whole affair, I've had to stop and apologize and explain to my children, both five and seven years old, several times why mommy is crying and upset and why daddy is spending not as much time with them as I would like and instead constantly putting out fires left and right, right, handling business. I have had multiple death threats sent to me. My home address has been published on social media. All manner of nasty comments accusing me of punching a dog in the head, choking, kicking, and beating a dog because of what one individual in particular, and now actually several, have fabricated in their own minds and spewed out on a public platform. Not for nothing, the individual, one of the individuals who's putting this out, has almost 500,000 followers, and I would like to think that they should think before they make heavy and serious accusations such as this, that they should do their research and they should find out what really happened before on a public platform multiple, multiple times, make a bold claim that I punched, struck, or kicked a dog, which is disgusting. Meanwhile, my family and I are supposed to be on vacation, the first real vacation in years. We're trying to enjoy ourselves and spend quality time with my kids, but that's hard to do when, for instance, my wife, who already struggles with her own personal health issues, has had to stay up night after night past midnight to delete hundreds of disgusting, nasty, and hateful comments as a direct result of the lies being posted on various platforms. To summarize, when you are falsely accused of something publicly, it's not a pleasant experience, and I don't wish it on anyone. Making claims that a dog trainer is abusive is more than enough to end someone's career and put them in jail or prison. It's a very damning claim and requires solid evidence because we are playing a very high stakes game when we are talking about animal welfare and the life and career of someone, their family, and all the families supported by my business. These are very bold claims being made and they should not be taken lightly, hence why we're putting out this video uh, to address them. So here's a little background before we get into the video. I feel like it's, it's important. Um, first and foremost, there is something I am guilty of. Number one, it's being too open, too honest, and too real, sometimes to a fault. I show and share a lot of my training methods online, so it's not like what I put out there goes unnoticed. I'm also guilty of working too hard. I'm guilty of too often putting my business <clears throat> and my work before my family. I'm guilty of a lot of things, and I've certainly made a lot of mistakes along the way. But one thing I'm not guilty of is dog abuse. If it sounds defensive, it's because I'm on trial. I'm in the public eye and being accused publicly of a crime Make no mistake, animal abuse is a crime that you could and should go to prison for. I believe I have the right to defend myself and bring forth my evidence and present my case before the public and the jury of public opinion, which is those of you watching right now. Now, if after I present my case and the whole case, you still think I'm a bad dog trainer, or you think I don't know what I'm doing, or I'm an animal abuser, then stop what you're doing right now and call 911 immediately to report the crime. But either way, let's at least agree that if you don't like my style of training or my methods of training, to which there are 
thousands of videos and hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of it online and you don't like it, then let's just agree that I'm not the trainer for you and you're probably not the client for me and we can both move on. We don't all like the same flavor of ice cream and if you don't like my flavor of ice cream, you don't need to eat it. There are plenty of other flavors out there and I'm sure you'll find one that suits you. Now for the rest of you who have been following me for years, you already know what time it is, so just stay tuned. We got more coming. Now, let me first ask some questions which are directed at the handful of naysayers who continue to post critical videos about me and my training methods and have continued to do so for years. It just comes with the territory, I guess. You can't be a professional dog trainer or a content creator without absolutely getting destroyed in uh, social media with, with silly TikTok drama. It's, it's seriously sad. The question that I ask is, how on earth do, I th do you think I achieved this level of success? By hurting dogs or by helping them? I have nothing to hide. That's why the original video where this five second clip was pulled from has been up for about two years, maybe over two years now, with approximately 500,000 views on just one of the videos alone, the real video in question. And it's just now, all of a sudden, two years later, that it's a problem. If there's animal abuse in that video, which is two years old with half a million views, where are the police? Where is the FBI? Where is PETA? Where's the grand jury indictment? Simply put, folks, it's creative editing. It's a lie, and unfortunately, many of you are falling for the fake news. If I broke the law or abused a dog, someone call the police right now, and let's get a police report filed. A full investigation should be conducted, but none of this has happened in over two years. We train celebrity and VIP clients across the country I attract those clients because of my experience, my results, and the trainings I post online. The vast majority of our clients that come to us for our board and training program travel to us from out of, out of state, from out of state. They come all the way down to Florida because I'm a dog abuser. Look, simply put, I don't have time for the drama. For the last five years, I have worked 80 to 120 hours nonstop every week, grinding between two full-time jobs to support my family, service my customers, and grow my business. That means no vacations, no holidays, no breaks, just a constant grind. I walked away from 18 and a half years on the police force as a police lieutenant, making over $120,000 a year in my base salary. And I was less then three years shy of a full retirement. I took a huge leap of faith and walked away from millions of dollars in retirement money guaranteed to me for the rest of my life to pursue my love, my passion, and now my family's livelihood, which is training dogs professionally. And now, unfortunately, it appears that several people out there think they're gonna take all that I've worked so hard for away from me by spreading lies about me over a five second completely blurred video clip from two years ago. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. This is what I consider internet trash from lying, deceitful, and hateful people posting highly edited and doctored up videos to willfully tarnish my reputation and attempt to ruin my name and my business to gain internet clout and views. What do I mean by doctored up videos? Let me explain. Taking 40 minutes a video which documents a four hour training session with a highly aggressive dog with a bite history and trimming it down to five seconds with zero backstory presented and tweaking it to suit your narrative is nothing short of a well-crafted lie, which makes it even more deceitful and disgusting when you take into the account the amount of time it took to comb through all of the footage to select just the right moment, uh, add in all the captions and all the drama and what kind of drama are we talking about? Slowing it down, enhancing the audio, playing it back multiple, multiple times, narrating over it with captions and your own words out of your mouth, blatantly stating numerous times, and not one video, but now multiple videos that I am punching, kicking, beating, choking, or otherwise abusing a dog is nothing short of being shockingly deceitful, spiteful, and ignorant. Enough talking from me. It's time to show one of the videos. Check it out if you're interested in getting your puppy, like Miss Kona here is only four months old, 
off leash healing. How do you keep your dog from developing horrible, horrible food aggression? We can put our hands in it. We can be all up in his business. You follow? Now, this is going to be interesting. What I was going to ask you to do is put him into a down. Okay. Okay. There you go. Like that. You understand? Yeah, hard. Okay. There you go. Like that. You yeah. understand? Yeah, hard. Okay, you're much harder than that. I just can't see if that's a to me or what. If you do something stupid, uh, I'll make it very unpleasant for you. With this one, actually, just like that. <coughs> no. Now this will really stress him out. Dominating position. I'm only going to let him up when he relaxes. Good boy. Okay, come on. Go. Like that. You yeah. understand? Yeah, hard. Okay, I'll say it. Anybody who's handled dogs knows what it sounds like when you rip a slip or a prong. And it's all here. And when you rip it, that vocal cord goes with it. Dogs don't wince like that when they're being corrected. They can't get that out. That is fist to skull. That is a guy punching a dog and so egotistical that he still wants to put that video up there and just blur it as if we're all stupid. The other stuff in that montage with putting your face and hands in a dog's bowl and telling 3 million people that fixes resource guarding or alpha rolling a very scared adolescent German shepherd. Like, that stuff's par for the course. But punching a dog? No. That just shows you you're not a good person outside of being an amateur. As you can see, a lot of drama, a lot of splicing in little clips, a lot of captioning, uh, explaining what they think is going on in the video, but it's very hard to put into a 20 or 30 second clip with uh, multiple clips inserted, three to five seconds each, to have the entire backstory. It's wrong, it's deceitful, it's lying by excluding the whole story. And so let's dive in a little deeper. First and foremost, aggressive dog training is not always pleasant, hate to break it to you. The vast and overwhelming majority of dog trainers won't touch these dogs uh, or these types of dogs for fear of being bit and because many simply don't know how or have no experience in doing it. Or if they do, they still choose not to do it because of the liability involved. It's not fun, it's not safe, you can get bit. It's sometimes you ask, is it worth the money? And for those that do do it on the regular, don't normally film it, except for one trainer in particular who films it on the regular and gets a ton of love and a ton of hate for it, even though he's saving dogs' lives. And guess what? Dog aggression at this level, whether it's dog on human aggression or dog on dog aggression, can't always be solved with a treat and a hug and a lollipop. Unfortunately, it just simply can't. Especially with severe cases and dogs with a bite history on their own owners and others. I don't know what your experience is with aggressive cases, but I've been working and training dominant and aggressive working dogs and police dogs for over 20 years, which combined have hundreds if not thousands of documented street bites amongst them. In the last 22 years of my professional life, including dog training and my police career, I have personally witnessed more dog bites on human flesh, both in training and in real life than I can count. 
I've worked professionally as a civilian EOD handler, which is basically just a bomb dog handler, uh, a police canine handler, a police canine supervisor, and a trainer. I have traveled the country training police dogs and police canine handlers how to better perform their jobs and ultimately, hopefully, save their lives and others. I've been honored and humbled to have worked and studied side by side with some of the best in the industry, if not the world. I don't claim to be the best, but simply put, I've been around a lot of high drive working dogs, hard ass and intense police dogs for a very long time. I've put in the hours and I've put in the work and I would like to think that I have at least some experience and some know-how and some platform with which to speak from. I don't know the full extent of your experience, but I do know it's vastly different than mine. Whatever training it is that you do, may I suggest to you that you keep doing whatever it is that works for you because I'm gonna keep doing what works for me and my clients and I'll continue to practice and improve my craft every day and continue to help others as best as I can. By the way, I not only train dogs and their owners, I have also a very successful track record of producing other successful dog trainers. Some have come from backgrounds in police canine training where we met and others from training with me in person and others from taking our online courses. Either way, I have been personally uh, been able to build them up to be so successful, they've been able to completely transform their lives. They've been able to leave their dead-end jobs, help countless other dog owners with their training needs, and make a great amount of money doing it. Nothing makes me prouder. Now, it's time to jump in and address these four issues that were brought up in order. Number one, e-collar and prong collar on young dogs. So, for years now, professional dog trainers have said that you shouldn't put an e-collar on a dog until it's at least six months of age. And I ask, what is so evil about the e-collar that we have to wait until the dog is old enough to be, quote, prepared for it? Now, if you don't know how to use the e-collar properly, and you only use it as a hammer in an old school way that has been done for like over 20, 30, 40 years, then yes, obviously you shouldn't use it on a puppy but that would simply show your ignorance on the proper use and conditioning of the e-collar, which when done correctly, can absolutely be used on a dog of any age if you know what you're doing. Same as a leash, same as a prong. It's not the tool, it's how you use it, and we'll dive in a little deeper. Putting a leash on a young puppy and trying to lead them around, I guarantee you is more traumatic than simply placing an e-collar on a young puppy and not even using it, just simply putting it there to condition them to what it's like to wear. In other words, it doesn't mean anything. Furthermore, what if we put a prong collar on a puppy and we put it on inside out to once again condition them to it, to prepare them for it? God forbid they're gonna be 120 or 140 pound mastiff type breed, working line dog, that's gonna need the prong collar in the future when do we prepare them for that inevitable future? Preparing the dog for a correction with direction in the future so they know what the pressure is and how to turn it off is the name of the game. I will give you this little aside and hopefully this makes sense for you. I think of it a lot like swimming. Is it better to take someone who's 20, 30, or 40 years old and has never been in a pool before and throw them into a deep end, into the deep end of the pool and hope they figure out how to swim and you wait until that age to do it? That's unfair. That's not cool. That's not ideal. They're gonna go in, they're gonna be around the pool with a lot of fear and trepidation as to what's about to happen because they don't know how to swim because they've never been in the water. Contrast that with a little baby, a three-month-old, six-month-old baby, a one or two-year-old, or like my four or five-year-old who thinks she's an Olympic swimmer but doesn't know how to swim but has zero fear of the water. That's the beautiful thing about young puppies is they're easily moldable, right? They have a plastic mind. And so when you expose them to these tools in the right way at a young age, it's, it's, like, it's like a baby in water. It's nothing, it's nothing. So, and the proof's in the pudding. We have video after video after video of the success we have had using the e-collar properly. In other words, and it's gonna blow your mind, I'm sure it will, make them 
love the e-collar because if we pair the e-collar or the prong collar with something they love like a food or a treat or play or fetch, you name it, they love the e-collar. And what's the harm in that? Again, um, we caution anyone who doesn't know what they're doing to not put an e-collar on any dog, let alone what age it is, it doesn't matter. If you don't know what you're doing, don't use it. We say that all the time. You always need to seek the advice of an experienced, balanced trainer who is a professional at what they do with years and years of experience under their belt. Now, what, and I'm gonna dive in a little deeper, what's actually more evil, in my opinion, than putting an e-collar on a young puppy and introducing it to them the right way is waiting until a dog is two years old, been getting away with murder, refuses to listen, has all manner of bad habits, and now that it's two years old and full of bad habits, introducing the e-collar as a hammer to solve major behavioral issues. That's not the ideal way to do it, and that's not what we teach or preach. To summarize, even though we do it, we don't recommend you do it unless you know exactly what you're doing. Moving on. 90 to 95 percent of what we do is positive reinforcement based training we use when necessary e-collars and prong collars to underscore our positive reinforcement based training but you don't highlight any of the good work we do any of the thousands of videos and hundreds of hours of training online all available online never have i seen one compliment where you highlight training methods that i imagine you would have to agree with, such as food luring or free shaping, which is 100% positive in nature. I've never seen you taking the time to point out how happy the dogs are we are training, but moving on. Point number two, the one you started the nonsense with, the online drama, about two years ago. And that has to do with my opinion on food aggression, one of my many opinions on food aggression. Uh, and let me first state that when filming shorts or TikToks, we have like 60 seconds or less to try to put out an idea. It's impossible to fully establish the idea in 60 seconds or less, a more complex issue such as food aggression. However, about two years ago, you and other dog trainers came after me on my opinion surrounding food aggression. But before we begin to discuss food aggression, resource guarding or possession in general, I have to stop and ask you and everyone else that has a problem with my take on it, the following. Ask yourself this, have you ever had to remove a 90 pound super driven Belgian Malinois or a 105 plus pound working line German Shepherd from a bite on the street? It is 10 to 100 times more intense than pulling away a bowl of food from a puppy or an adult dog with food aggression. To be clear, it is a whole other level of intensity that cannot be created. Uh, practicing bite work as a sport on a field with rules, equipment, safety measures, and preparation and communication between handler and decoy. I'm talking about adrenaline-fueled, sweat, blood, screaming, yelling, real fighting, real stakes, when you're questioning whether or not you're gonna make it home in one piece or not, police dogs are on an entirely different level of drive and possession and intensity in a real life or death uh, bite scenario. And more intense than anything you could ever try to duplicate in training or otherwise. So have you ever tried to out a police dog from a live human bite after a long, nasty, bloody struggle? I know you haven't. If you've never seen a dog with so much drive and frustration that when removed from the bite of a criminal, it redirects onto the backup officer or latches on to its own canine handler just to let out the frustration and satisfy that need to bite. And have you had to step in and help choke that dog off the bite? If you haven't, then simply put sir or ma'am, you can't speak on the matter of dominance, possession, or aggression from the, same, from the same standpoint as me. If you've never trained that or physically removed a dog from a live bite on a human time and time again, then you are not in my world and can't speak on the matter from my viewpoint. You are welcome, very welcome to offer your opinion on how you train, but don't talk down to me about my training when you know nothing about it. I stand by what I said then and I will repeat it now. While your puppy is young, my belief is you should explore if your puppy has food aggression and get them habituated at the same time to you being around them and their food at a young age. If 
while testing and exploring if your dog has food aggression at this young age and you find your puppy has food aggression issues, you fix it now, not later. Don't sweep it under the rug. We don't just give the dog its space until it's two years old, fully grown, and the problem has not uh, been dealt with. It's been there the whole time lurking under the surface and you just cross your fingers and ignore it and tiptoe around the problem and hope it magically goes away on its own and the dog thinks he owns the place and ultimately bites the shit out of someone because you didn't fix the problem. Again, you do you. I'll keep doing what works for me and has worked for me for over 20 years with real dogs in real life time and time again. And let me just put it, I have never been bit or anything close to that from food aggression. Thank you very much. All right, now we're gonna get into uh, topic number three, what I'm calling the Belgian Malinois from zero to hero, because it's uh, obviously displayed in the video you saw earlier where the dog is put into a side submission, and there's a lot to cover, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, first and foremost, I will tell you that any of these aggressive dog training cases usually last three or four hours or more. Uh, it's hard to film literally every second of it, uh, most batteries won't last that long in camera. We have to go through multiple uh, batteries as it is. And plus the footage, especially if shot in 4K, is just ridiculous. So when we're taking breaks and this and that, the camera's not on. Uh, and by the way, even if we filmed every single second of it, nobody wants to see a four hour training session. It's, it's pretty boring. Uh, so no matter how you slice it, we will trim it down a video uh, any video to either make it entertaining, educational, or both and highlight the important parts. So the uh, video you see with the Malinois, you, you see a ton of it. The real video, the original video, which I don't have it in front of me, could be 10, 15 minutes long, is showing a good bulk of what happened. Uh, now, little backstory on the video you are about to watch. Mind you, we're not gonna show you the full 15 or 20 minute video, whatever it is. We're gonna show you uh, a bunch of videos of his entire training process. Uh, put down into a small uh, digestible video for, for you to, to watch and enjoy, actually. Uh, so here's the backstory. Sarge, the dog in the video, is a Belgian Malinois, not a German Shepherd. Uh, that's, that's, by the way, extremely obvious. We're alpha rolling a very scared adolescent German Shepherd. I, I don't know how you missed that one. Uh, but that dog had some serious issues when he was brought to me. The owner, Ryan, was desperate for a solution and he could not find any trainer anywhere in our area that would take on the dog due to the breed and intensity of his aggression and reactivity. He had to wear a muzzle 24 seven when out of the home. To complicate matters, Ryan lived, uh, the dog Sarge had to wear a muzzle, not Ryan. Uh, Ryan lived on approximately the 12th floor, don't quote me, pretty high up, of a very busy apartment complex in Miami Beach. And he had to take the stairs up and down multiple times a day because his dog could not be in an elevator with anyone else or be seen in the lobby of the building, et cetera, et cetera. Even if he got on the elevator with nobody on it, just being in the waiting area of the, of the elevator, completely out of control. And when the doors open, if there's another dog, which is like a dog in almost every apartment in that building, I was there, uh, hundreds of dogs in that building, it would be a nasty, nasty dog fight and he'd be kicked out of the building. So it's just not gonna work. So all day, every day, up and down the stairs, which is, if you know, no good for a dog. It's just not practical anyways. Anyways, a dog uh, like that would not be accepted, by the way, at a shelter for adoption. There, who's gonna take that dog on? Who's gonna adopt that dog? It's not gonna happen. This dog would have absolutely been put down. Ryan would have been kicked out of his apartment, you name it. It was causing a lot of issues for a lot of people. And, and again, ultimately, if we don't solve the problem, Nobody else is gonna solve it, so we had to step in and help him. And by nobody else, I mean we were his last resort. <sighs> so, I would like to state that Ryan was very likely just one slip of the leash or one misstep away, like a, a loose muzzle, from biting another dog or human. Not Ryan again, Sarge. Just one, it's, it's, it's a loaded gun he was walking around with. I don't know how he did it as long as he did. It was simply just a matter of time before somebody got bit or they had to make a decision to put Sarge down. The only reason the dog hadn't bit anyone yet is not for lack of trying, it's because Ryan had been forced to use the muzzle for months. Now, before we start, I must warn you, as we always do, that the techniques we use in this video should never be duplicated or simulated in any way as you can definitely get bit or injure your dog if you don't know what you're doing. That's why a lot of this video is edited out so others don't try to replicate our techniques on their own. It's too risky, folks, simply too risky. As always, 
when dealing with an aggressive or reactive dog, you should always, always hire an experienced professional balance trainer in your area to help you in person to deal with the aggression case. That's what we preach all the time. Uh, we've had, I can't tell you how many hundreds, if not thousands of requests to create online courses to deal with aggression issues. We'd make a lot of money doing it. I will not put it out there because it's simply not safe. It is not the right thing to do to try to teach people how to deal with severe uh, reactive and aggressive cases. They're going to get bit. It's going to be ugly. And I don't want any part of that. We always recommend time and time again, probably a dozen times a day for folks to seek out professional balance trainers. All right. Now, uh, furthermore, you're going to see the dog lunge at me and try to bite me upon initial contact. And at some point, you will see the dog put into a side submissive position. Apologies if there's a, a lot of uh, scene changes or you see the background changing at all. Um, I'm not at my home. We're using a, a different camera. Batteries last like 10 minutes, if that. Uh, so going back to the video, the reactivity starts when I'm about 75 yards away. The dog is wearing a muzzle for my protection, which luckily he was, as I would have definitely been bit. I have what you might consider a back tie set up over the top of a tree to create what we call a swing effect to protect me as I have to work the dog alone, as I don't trust the owner who's not experienced to understand what to do. It's just me, myself, and I. I had an assistant filming, but that assistant was not experienced uh, enough yet, nor would I ever want to put him uh, too close to this dog in, in a situation like this. So I'm going to handle it myself, uh, but I'm going to use some of these tools to help me. So let's talk about the swing effect. Uh, properly positioned, again, don't try this at home. Don't do it. But it's like a swing at the park, meaning it sits here. And when you push it forward or backward, what does it do? It lifts up. So we have it set up to where the dog can be in a small, confined area. And if it were to take one or two steps towards me, all I need to simply do is back up and he will lift himself up off the uh, floor, lose traction, his front paws will come off the floor. Furthermore, as we'll talk about later, when we talk about fight or flight, if the dog tries to run away or do anything else or go after the cameraman, whatever, he can't go anywhere. He can't go but one or two steps in any direction uh, without losing traction. His front feet will come off the ground. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, should the dog bite me, right? Because at some point we're going to take the muzzle off. I know that going in. Should things get real ugly and the dog latch onto me and refuse to let go, uh, who's going to get the dog off the bite? In this instance, I can simply, once again, step away, get his front feet off the ground, which will cause him to let go of the bite because who's going to get him off of me? Finally, let's see what else we have here. Oh yeah, the simple one. Save my back from trying to battle a dog of his size and temperament uh, and make the entire ordeal uh, much less personal. I'm not gonna battle with the dog. I'm not, you're not gonna see me swinging around on the leash. Uh, this dog is highly, highly uh, reactive, leash reactive, and it's nothing personal. I'm not trying to be mean to the dog, and I don't need to do any uh, heavy duty leash techniques uh, in a personal manner, meaning anything he does on the end of that leash it's, it's on him. If his front feet come off the ground, it's from his actions uh, alone. It has nothing to do with me. Again, if he comes at me, I move away from him. I move away. It's not me causing any discomfort. It's his own actions doing it. And hence, he learns very quickly what does and does not work for him in this instance. All right. Uh, now, we're going to talk about the side submission. Uh, or some people call it an alpha roll. I don't call it that. We're not alpha rolling this dog. This dog's not showing any uh, dominance per se. Uh, accomplishes a few things in different circumstances and different, different applications. Number one, in the case of this dog, who is, by the way, exhibiting fight or flight. His go-to maneuver that's been working for him for months is to put on a huge big show, reach out, lunge, try to bite people, and make his problems go away with the sign of aggression. Well, we're going to turn that off. No more fight. Fight is no longer an option. Then what he's going to revert to or resort to is flight but you can't run away from your problems anymore. We have to address it. And so uh, by putting a dog in a side submission, we make them face their fears, very applicable to, to a bunch of things beyond just leash reactivity. Um, yes, it can establish dominance and a pecking order as dogs do this naturally during play, during fighting, during signs of dominance. And anyone that thinks there's no dominance in a, a dog pack, you just click away right now because you have no business watching anything further. I would just, I can't help you. Um, now, also what you might see in this side submission 
whatever word you want to call it, a dog laying calmly on its side, is exactly what will be done in a vet's office with a dog, whether the dog's getting x-rays or having their nails trimmed, etc. The dog has an injury on its pad, its paw, its, its uh, belly, you name it. We do it all the time. We wash dogs in a side submission uh, position, meaning laying on their side. If we can get a dog to relax in a side submission, it's so much better for everyone involved, including the dog. And last but not least, you won't believe this. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. It can build trust because if you can get a dog to lay in a side submission and have him face his fears and realize in the most submissive position possible at his most vulnerable, nothing bad happens from the boogeyman that doesn't exist. The boogeyman's petting you. The boogeyman's touching you and loving you and no harm will become of you. And when we make them realize that, it completely unlocks uh, uh, their mind and opens them up to like, oh, hey, this guy's not that bad. He's not here trying to kill me. If he wanted to kill me, he could have killed me. And he didn't. This guy's not so bad after all, which you'll see in the video. <laughs> to be clear, the reason we had to jump right in uh, to this type of situation with Sarge is, as you can see clearly, he's not in any mood to accept any treats, hugs, or pets from me. Uh, this is an animal that I need to take possession of. We need to start a board and train program. He's going to be coming into my home with my wife and kids and, and my other employees. I cannot have a ticking time bomb come into my home like that. So we got to establish the ground rules early on uh, before I can allow a, an animal like that into my home. And uh, that's exactly what we accomplished, mission accomplished. So he's doing well. He's doing actually really well. He's not like totally comfortable, but he's doing better. Good. Come on. Good boy. A scared dog is a dangerous dog. We're back. We're actually going to train the dog now. A little bit of positive training, build some engagement. Again, two days ago he was trying to eat me. Now I just want him to trust me, love me, come to me. I'm the money man. I'm going to take him from what it was a killer with a muzzle on, looking like Hannibal Lecter trying to eat everybody. Yes. To what I call Mr. Buttercup. So. Sarge is now Mr. Buttercup. That's his code name. He's doing really good. Thank God. When you're ready, Sarge. Yes. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Sarge. Look at that. Yes. Good boy. <laughs> Pay him some more. Pay him some more. Yeah. Sarge. Yes. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. And then we'll do a big left return right here. Start from the boy. This dog is loving life now. Off leash in six days. Kid on like rollerblades over here. Five, six days ago, he would be losing his mind right now. So he we gave him a new job and now he's doing wonderfully at that job. He loves that job. And I'm letting him know, hey, I got it. Oh, you see that dog down the street? I'll handle that. Hang out next to me. Things will be fine. And now that he's got that under his belt, night and day difference. We have literally saved this dog's life. I love seeing dogs do a complete 180 and, and find their purpose in life and be a happy dog. You guys may remember Mr. Sarge. This is him here, back in his home turf. Living the dream. This is a dog that you literally couldn't be, uh, man, within probably a hundred yards of. If he saw, heard, or smelled anyone, person walking, a kid on a bike, dog, you name it. He was just losing his mind. Uh, from zero to 100, he was at 100. And now we are, uh, you could call this loose leash walking. He's not actually holding the leash. And we're going to take it off in just a second to show you. He is on the e-collar. And this is a pretty busy uh, area here. So hopefully we'll be passing people on bikes or cars or whatever. Perfect. Beautiful job. Left-hander to get back on the line. Beautiful. Slow pace. Crawl. Oh yeah. 
Beautiful. All right, we're here at the Home Depot, and we got Mr. Sarge with his owner, Ryan. But uh, the point is, Sarge here is uh, starting to finish up a, uh, a puppy board and train program for his aggression issues and his confidence issues. And as you can see, we're in the, the Home Depot, and he's really working on his uh, confidence here. And I mean, this is very stressful for many dogs, and he's just absolutely killing it. So we're very proud of him. If you could see where we had started, this is not even the same dog, so y'all in the next video all right so this is sarge he was with us uh started with us five weeks ago and if you've seen from the prior footage uh pretty much a wild man couldn't take him anywhere we're here at a condo where ryan lives with sarge and there's a lot of dogs and highly highly reactive probably one of the worst cases we've seen and here we are five weeks later sarge is happy to be back home and uh ryan what would you say uh the difference is between uh, where he was to where he is now uh night and day to say the least uh, he left here trying to kill people, kill other dogs, attack anything and everything, barking at people, to coming back a, a trained machine. Yeah. He's uh, I couldn't ask for better. How long yeah. have we been uh, out here for this final lesson? We've been out here for what, three hours? <laughs> yeah, give or take. Has he barked, growled, lunged, done anything stupid? Done nothing except for exactly what we tell him to. Yeah. He's done, uh, I, I couldn't even thank Garrett enough as what he's done for my dog. He changed his life and mine. He uh, went from taking a dog that can't go anywhere to a dog that I will be taking everywhere. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. All right, man. That's all she wrote. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, now we're going to move on to number four. There's some folks over here doing some lawn work. I apologize if it's a little loud, but we're going to go ahead and push through this. Um... What you're going to see, because there's a ton of backstory, folks, is a three-year-old uh, German Shepherd, about 90 pounds, who is now in his third home, all right? Went from the breeder to the first family who couldn't handle him to the second family who couldn't handle him. This is his last hope, folks. Corey and his wife are his last hope. He's been living uh, with Corey for, I think, a few months at this point. Corey and his wife have shown nothing but love and affection. But love and affection was not enough in this case. The dog, who might have been a little too much for Corey to handle at the time because Corey was not experienced, but that's fine. We gave him the experience. Uh, we talked and walked him through it. Uh, what ends up happening is uh, some months into it, some weeks into to, uh, Ace, the German Shepherd being in their home, there's an issue, a resource guarding issue over a toy or the remnants of a toy. And it's late at night and Corey goes over to take the toy and, and get ready for bed or whatever. He didn't want the dog to eat the stuffing inside of the toy. And Ace turned on him. Resource guarded. Again, it wasn't addressed when he was a puppy. That's pretty clear. And went after Corey and bit him. Corey tried his best to, uh, you know, deal with it. And the dog bit him a second time. That's two bites on his loving owner. That is a dominance-based aggression for the most part. Uh, and what you're gonna see in this video is how we fix it. Now, to more backstory to it, uh, Corey didn't reach out to, directly to me. The breeder of this dog reached out to me desperately saying, Garrett, if you can't fix this problem, I don't know who can, and I don't know what we're gonna do with a dog like this. Uh, no one's gonna be able to adopt it. No one's gonna want it. It has now a bite history. You got to help these people out. And uh, I did it as a favor for him and for these clients who I had not met before. But if they're friends of the breeder, they're friends of mine. And so uh, the clients, uh, Corey and his wife, drove down five hours to come see me so that we could do this training session. Now, when someone drives five hours to see me, we're going to fix the issue. This is not something that's going to take uh, a months and months of, of work on. This is not something that we're even able to accomplish over many, many different training sessions, over many, many uh, days, weeks, and months. And nor did it require that. It required exactly what you're gonna see in this video. The proof is in the pudding. They come for a four hour training. I would say that 3.95 hours of that training was me teaching them how to be better leaders and owners and what we call owner trainers about five seconds, actually 1.5 seconds of the training is directed towards Mr. Ace. And what you're going to see in this video 
is what's considered a leash pop correction, a very heavy series of heavy multiple leash pop corrections. Again, nothing that we would ever suggest you do to a dog of this nature. If you do it wrong and you don't do it enough or hard enough, that dog will turn on you and will absolutely bite you, just like Ace would have or could have uh, if we didn't do it correctly. It's what's considered an overcorrection, all right? If he's as you see in the video, try to bite me multiple times. If you want to call that a level four, five, six, or seven reaction from him, we don't meet a level seven bite from a dog with a little level four or a five or a six or a seven uh, reaction to that. Absolutely not. If you come at me with a seven, you're going to find out what a 10 is really quickly and it is done after that. Again, I will reiterate, do not attempt this at, at uh, by yourself. Uh, it, it's going to go horribly wrong for you. Uh, furthermore, let's address the three reasons why when we originally posted this video, which has remained up since it was posted and has some half a million views, give or take, why we chose to blur this part out to begin with. I thought it was important to show uh, what can be done with a dog, that there is hope with many hopeless aggression cases. But the reason we blurred it was three reasons. Number one, we felt that YouTube might demonetize it or, or just uh, shadow ban it, whatever you want to call it, that it would not be viewable by others, number one. Number two, simply put, many folks out there are not, are, are too soft, we should say, too soft to understand the reality of dealing with an aggressive dog like this. And I'll repeat it again. This was not going to get fixed with a hug, a kiss, or a treat. Uh, Corey uh, tried that, and he got bit twice as a result. So it's obviously not going to be the solution that's needed. This dog has some serious dominance issues and just wants to bite you as soon as look at you. And finally, number three, the most important one, we don't want anyone out there trying to recreate what we're doing because I've already said it. If you do it wrong, yes, you could hurt the dog. But number two, I'm telling you, you're going to get bit and I don't want to be responsible or liable for that. And so, however, we've made the decision that in order to quell the, the BS that's being spewed all over the internet, saying that I punched, strike, kicked, or choked the dog. That is fist to skull. That is a guy punching a dog. We're now gonna have to show you what exactly happened. Again, about one and a half seconds of correction delivered to the dog with about four or five heavy leash pops. I call it four and a half. The first four were heavy. The fifth one, uh, totally uh, not that hard, uh, but it doesn't matter. I stand by what I did. It absolutely solved the problem, not only right then and there, it never needed to be done again for the life of the dog up to this point. You will hear it from the owner's mouth. It's been over two years since we trained this dog. And the proof is once again in the pudding. However, I will caution you before you watch this, if you are soft-hearted or gentle-natured and you don't want to see a dog uh, get delivered a heavy correction, then this is not for you. I don't suggest you watch it. For everyone else, please go ahead and check it out. I'm worried about him attacking another family member. I'm worried about him, you know, attacking someone on the streets. We have, you know, family that have kids. We want to have kids at one point, so. So I get off the bed and I, I swept up both the things. I looked at him and said, what are you doing? And that was it. He, he took off and bit me. So I let him go and he got me a second time. I'm afraid of, you know, if we have family over. Like that? He doesn't like that. So that's a bite. And now mind you, it didn't hurt him. Just touch him. No, I know, he doesn't like that stuff. So that's another bite. This is what we do for extra aggressive dogs. So this is when, if he wants to wild out and thinks he's gonna go after anybody, mm -hmm. we ain't gonna get anybody. Right. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> like that. And I'm not mad at him. No. He's not mad at me. We're back to normal. He's, he's night and day right now. Yeah, like I can That's trust him correct. way more now. Like he seems like he listens better. Like he really, under. You know, we want to make sure he doesn't attack anybody. And that's that's the end of it. So we look forward to his progress. It's Ace and Corey here. Uh, just giving you an update on how he's been. So far, we have no incidents since the time we left Garrett's. Can't thank him enough for the work that he's done. Um, 
Ace here is a good boy, just loves life. Oh, thank you, Baba. He's a good boy. Wouldn't put him down for the world. I'm glad we took him to where we took him. And I'm glad Garrett was able to assist us because he's a great dog. Um, no incidents. Likes to go out and play in the park. Likes the groomers. And uh, just a completely different dog. So thank you again. If you want to see the full length video, it's actually two parts long. Uh, and you can go and watch it. It's available on my YouTube platform. Check it out. It's been there. Uh, like I said, you're going to see everything that led up to it. You're going to see all the ins and outs. And, and now you've seen the one and a half long, second long correction that was needed to fix the dog permanently and save the dog from being put down. As you might also notice, we used two entirely different training methods for the two very different types of dogs with different forms of aggression. There is never a guarantee that any type of dog training will work for every dog. This can, as simple as sits and downs, can be taught differently depending upon uh, what motivates the dog and where the dog is at in their training, their personality, their temperament, you name it. All you can do is make the best judgment call you can and attempt what you think is the best course of action. If you're not getting the results you're looking for, you just dig a little deeper into your toolbox, your trainer's toolbox, and you try something else. I will, however, tell you that in both of these instances, I got accomplished exactly what I needed to in the time frame available to me. I can't think of anything I would have done differently knowing what I know now and also then. It obviously worked, so I must have done something right. In the case of Ace, I had to fix the problem right then and there. There wasn't going to be a second session. It's going to be fixed now. Mission accomplished in 1.5 seconds, four or five heavy leash pressure, uh, uh, leash pop corrections. If you have a problem with that, I can't help you. It saved the dog's life. Euthanasia, four or five pops on a leash, on a prong collar. I make no excuses about that. Furthermore, you may say, why did you do it so hard? Roll it back and watch how many times the dog attempted to bite me. Roll it back and watch the damage the dog has done to the owner's arm. This is not a soft dog, this is a hard dog. Hence why the only thing you hear coming out of the dog's mouth is not a big yelp, not a big scream or cry for help, uh, barely a whimper, hard ass dog. Had I seen what I wanted to see in the first or second correction or the baby correction that the owner gave, I wouldn't have needed multiple corrections. Furthermore, the reason the corrections were so hard, I don't know if you noticed, that dog has got a winter coat on. That dog has got some seriously thick fur. And in order for a correction to, to get through that thick fur and to actually deliver the message that is required in this instance, it required exactly the amount of power uh, that I delivered. In fact, it needed more power than I could deliver, hence the multiple pops in a row. Let's talk about why we use the prong collar in this way for those of you that are interested. Dogs communicate with their mouth, with their teeth. And when he, the dog Ace, corrected his owner over the, the uh, possession of the toy, Ace used his teeth to tell the owner, back up, that's my toy, it's not for you. Fast forward, uh, a few days later or a week later when he's now with me in the video that you see, we used the prong collar, also known as, AKA, Mama's Teeth. The prong collar can, when used in a certain way, as you see in this video, acts like the teeth from another dog. And so now what we say, and I say it in the video, an armed society is a polite society. He uh, is armed with teeth and has tried to bite me three or four times in just the little short time that I got to know him. He went to bite me again for the fourth or fifth time. I then bit him back as hard as he needed to get bit back to understand that when you try to bite me, I will bite you back harder than you try to bite me. It's not in your best interest, don't do it again. And literally, he hasn't done it again in two years. Case close, problem solved. I don't feel I need to defend myself on it. I'm just explaining to you what we did for the naysayers that are out there, or for those of you who think it was a little too extreme. The alternative to the correction that I delivered that dog would be to call the breeder and say, this dog cannot be cured, put him down. You're not gonna see me make that call. I will do what it takes. I will deliver one and a half seconds of uh, mild discomfort, mild discomfort. Let's be honest, folks, it wasn't that bad. 
And if it cured the dog, absolutely what is required. Sometimes I use this example. Some people have cancer. We can either leave it alone and let the cancer take over the body, or we can use a scalpel and go into the body and remove the cancer. Now, cutting a body open with a knife or with a scalpel is not something pleasant. Surgery is not fun, but it's sometimes a necessary evil to go in there and literally cut out the problem. And that's what we did with this dog in, in a figure of speech. One and a half second surgery performed, job done. And the proof is in the pudding. Furthermore, I stayed in touch with Corey. It's for over the last two years, we have had phone calls, shared videos, text communication to make sure Ace has been staying on track. And he has been. That's why it was no problem for me to reach out to Corey and say, do me a favor. Can you give me a two year update video? Because things are getting a little ugly on social media and, and I could use the truth. Just speak. I didn't tell him what to say. Just said, tell me where Ace is at right now. Shoot me over a video. Thank you very much. And that's what you see before you. Now, I think, I think that about wraps it up, but there's one final thing that I'd like to say, if you would allow me. And this is my response. I have a few questions to ask. First is, where is your integrity and your honor? One of you served in the military. Do they not teach you integrity and honor? Did you do your due diligence or did you base everything you said on social media in multiple, multiple videos, make those heinous accusations? Uh, did you do any due diligence before you did that? No. Did you call me or reach out to me to discuss this? I'm not a hard person to find. If you had a problem with my training methods, you could have come direct to me. Did you file a police report? That's the big one. Did you call the police and file a police report? If you claim a crime has been committed and you've witnessed it and it's on camera, why didn't you file a police report? The answer to all of this is simply no. You didn't do your due diligence. You don't have any integrity and honor. You didn't call me or reach out to discuss this. You didn't file a police report. Now, to be very clear, to be so clear, I am not looking for a back and forth. I don't need the clout or the fame or the extra views on this type of garbage. This isn't the real housewives of dog training. I'm a professional dog trainer, a business owner, a father and a husband wearing many different hats. And I have a lot of work to do. I don't have a lot of time to sit on my couch with my shirt off and dissect other dog training methods and talk smack about them online to start an internet war. It's extremely taxing for me and very painful for my whole family and my team to have to stop what the, uh, they're doing and give any time to this disgusting, never ending nonsense that again has been going on for over two years. You want special attention so bad that you will stoop this low to get it repeatedly over and over and over again. I ask you, when will this end? It's embarrassing. Stop. Go train dogs if you're so good at it. Get off your couch, stop talking to the camera, and go train dogs or film training dogs. Teach us something. Show us your craft. If you really thought there was animal abuse, where is the video or proof of you calling 911 to report it? Some of you even posted my home address to encourage others to do me and my family harm. So it's not like you don't know where I live or who I am yet. The police should have come by by now. I'm still waiting for that. The police have not come knocking on my door because there is no dog abuse. But again, I ask, if you truly believe there is animal abuse, where is the proof that you reported it other than to try to gain views, clicks, likes, and clout? There isn't. Furthermore, I haven't seen any real trainers that I respect reach out to me online, phone call, text, or post, or anything trying to further this BS because they see it for exactly what it is, BS. Now. When it comes to everyone else who's consumed this 20 plus second video or has been uh, drinking the Kool-Aid as I'd like to say it and have passed judgment on me on a 20 second highly edited uh, 
spoon-fed content without your doing your own re research is, is disappointing. I am really happy and I compliment you that you have been so powerful and so quick to react to shut down an abusive dog trainer. Unfortunately, you're doing it against the wrong guy because there's no dog abuse. So keep doing what you're doing. Just choose your targets a little more carefully, please. Do your research and make sure you know what you're talking about before you post nasty, hateful comments and try to dissuade others from bettering their life with their dogs by being a follower of mine. Once again, I may not be the perfect trainer for you, but that doesn't mean I'm not the perfect trainer for someone else. Let them decide. Let them choose their own journey, their own flavor of ice cream, their own dog trainer. For those of you that shared and reposted and commented negatively on the fake video and called me a dog abuser and put a lot of time and effort into it, Lord, I saw the comments, hundreds and hundreds of them. I would just make a suggestion. Now that you've seen this video and you've seen that no dog was punched, strike, kicked or abused and you see the happy ending and the results we were able to come up with and save these dogs life. Why don't you go ahead and share, post, comment and spread this video with the same level of enthusiasm as when you thought I was punching a dog in the head. Ultimately, my family and I and my business will grow from this. It's brought my friends, family and team closer. I hope all of us can learn and grow from this as well, including those who made the nasty comments against me and who fabricated these videos to do harm to me. There is so much good we can do. Why are so many wasting time bashing each other online? Life is hard enough. We should be supporting each other and trying to help each other. If you thought I was such a shitty trainer, why after over two years have you never reached out to me or my team to offer your help? Where is your seminar that I can attend to learn from you? It's okay to disagree on training and bring up the conversation but what good comes from constantly bashing on the internet? Worry less about me and more about yourself and maybe you will grow your business and your following. I seem to occupy a lot of space in your brain. It would serve you better to focus on you and your customers and your followers and stop worrying about critiquing what I'm doing. Being a bully stopped being cool over 20 years ago. Internet bullying is even worse and more embarrassing to be honest. You can and should do better. I don't want an apology, nor do I need your apology. But your subscribers are owed an apology, and my family is owed an apology, and the public is owned an apology for your grossly unethical, shameful, and distasteful attempt at lying to them many times over. The proof is in the pudding. I do not, I do not apologize for my training methods as they simply work. They have worked and continue to work because I work hard at it. I have been and continue to refine my craft over the last 20 years. Now, I don't pretend to know everything and be perfect. I try and stay humble and continue to practice and learn. For instance, by all means, if you have a better way of dealing with severe aggression cases and have it fully documented on video, step by step, with the scars to prove it, I would love to learn more. I'm sure everyone would love to learn more. It's very easy to sit on the sidelines, or in this case, your couch, and Monday morning quarterback how I train severe aggression cases or how I train my clients' dogs, but all I hear is hate and I don't see any solutions being offered. Better to show me how you do it your way and not just tell me uh, or, or tell the internet how you don't like how I do it. If you want an aggressive case, let me know. I will literally send you one by the end of the week. I promise you that and we'll film the whole thing. I haven't mentioned your name because I don't wish hate upon you. I simply want you to back off and leave me and my family alone. I'm asking very nicely, very sincerely, and very publicly so there's no question where I stand. Ultimately, I forgive you. I forgive you for all the negativity you have brought against me, both directly and indirectly. I forgive you for all the insults. I forgive you for the pain you have caused my family. I forgive you for the negative impact you have had on my business. I forgive you for lying. 
I forgive you for your two plus year long journey of hatred towards me. I forgive you for all of that, but I don't forget. Obviously you have some issues or demons you are dealing with. Life can suck sometimes and it's hard. I get that. But I promise you that negativity only breeds more negativity and whatever issues you are having are not because of me. So kindly direct your aggression and attention elsewhere as it's not wanted here. I genuinely have no time to continue to have to defend myself, my honor, my integrity, my business, my life, feed my family and help support the almost 20 other households and families of my employees that work tirelessly to keep this business running and pushing forward on the long, very hard road to success. We have helped and continue to help thousands upon thousands of customers from around the world live a better life with their dogs. My time is much better spent running my business and attending to my family and my customers than it is trying to justify who I am to you or anyone else that would wish me or my family harm. I hope this is the end of the dishonesty, the backstabbing and the needless attacks on me and my business. There are better ways to get followers, I promise you.